motivation, inspiration. It's all bullshit without taking action. International best-selling author, serial entrepreneur, tough love, no BS, high-performance coach with an attitude. Welcome to the Queendom, where we talk about proven strategies to scale your business and scale your mind for ultimate success. And here's your hostess, cash flow queen, Kenitra. All right, greetings and peace, family. Welcome to another episode with the queendome.com and your hostess here, Queen. So um, today we're gonna get into a little bit of physics. Yes, we're gonna have a physics lecture and we're going to discuss quantum manifestation. Now, as we always do, before we get started, we're going to get into the present moment. So we're going to take a couple of deep breaths, breathing uh, in, inhaling through our nose, expanding our abdomen diaphragm as we inhale and exhaling through our nose, releasing the air, the prana, the chi, the life force. So let's do that. All right, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, so let's dive in. Uh, Cause I'm not sure how long um, it's gonna take us to get through the information that I want to share today. But uh, nevertheless, it'll be great, it'll be awesome. You'll love it and you'll get value from it. So now first off, let's talk about or describe what uh, quantum actually is. I'm sure you've heard uh, quantum physics, quantum mechanics, quantum entanglement, quantum realm. So let's just describe uh, here what quantum is. And this is actually coming to you from Wikipedia, which is not the end all be all by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, we'll use Wikipedia's definition. Quantum mechanics is a fundamental theory in physics that provides a description of the physical properties of nature at the scale of atoms and subatomic particles. It is the foundation of all quantum physics, including quantum chemistry, quantum field theory, quantum technology, and quantum information science. Now let's break this definition down into lay terms. The quantum is the field that we cannot see with our naked eye. This field exists and you can only connect with this field through your inner eye or your third eye your pineal gland. This field absolutely exists. And once you come to that realization that it exists and that you can tap into it and that you can start co-creating with this field the life that you want, it really makes living very fun, <laughs> very creative, very happy, very joyous. And just mm, lots of joy, right? So we have an electromagnetic field that radiates off of our body. The earth has an electromagnetic field that it radiates. This entire galaxy has an electromagnetic magnetic field that it radiates. And once you become in tune with yourself, and what you are made of and what you're capable of and what your power is, you can connect with these various electromagnetic fields and you can manipulate the space and the time continuum to actually manifest things, experiences, people, whatever it is that you're choosing 
in this dimension. <laughs> this is some powerful stuff, man. This is like, yeah, this is powerful. So I'm going to go through an article that comes from um, the Energetic Institute out of Australia. And um, we'll dissect the article. I'll make my commentary and so forth and talk about how you can tap into this quantum field and how you can start manipulating things to manifest what it is that you're choosing. The first thing that I recommend people to do is get get an overstanding that this field exists. Like it exists. So what you want to do is, because a lot of people, whatever your belief system is, whatever uh, the level of consciousness that, that you have will dictate to you how you're able to move about and how you're able to manifest things. So in order for you, in my opinion, to understand that this quantum field absolutely exists, is to do a little bit of study in physics around this idea that will increase or actually turn your belief from a belief into a knowing. Because once you know something, it's, it's beyond belief, right? So the proof is in the pudding. All right, so this article titled Manifestation, the Mind Space of Quantum Physics and Neuroscience. Two of my absolute uh, favorite subjects, quantum physics and neuroscience. All right, so let's dive in. The concept of reality and the search of our ultimate reality has dodged humans ever since we stood upright and noticed the starry heavens above us. Much of our human existence is devoted to trying to make sense of our place in the universe and the role and interaction we have within that reality. Various schools of philosophical, spiritual, and scientific thought now exist, which attempt to explain this dominant question of our human existence. At the dawn of the 21st century, mankind is faced with shedding the shackles of the industrial era and the paradigms of thinking that shaped and constrained us all in that period of history. Perhaps the biggest paradigm shift that has occurred has been the emergence of quantum physics and what it tells us about the nature of ourselves and reality as we perceive it. The whole concept of the idea that there is a fixed objective reality out there and outside of ourself waiting to be discovered as a total picture of reality is now dead. The world throughout the 20th century by scientists and physicists such as Einstein, uh, Born Wheeler, and Heisenberg established that the mind or in here arises at the same time in the phenomenal world or the out there. Quantum theory now describes how we create our reality in every moment as our mind influences the reality that pops from essentially an infinite cloud of possibility that is energy entwined with consciousness. This is the emptiness of the universe alluded to by all esoteric spirituality. Quantum physicists such as Fred Allen Wolf now speculate what is reality from these scientific principles. Another key shift in reality has been the healing of the misconception that the body and the mind are separate entities and are primarily run on separate processes. We now understand that the body and the mind are the two sides of the one coin that is the self with the embodied part of us being the gross form of energy that exists in inertia as matter, whilst the mind is the more subtle and kinetic energy that exists in interdependence with and through the body. The old 17th century Cartesian view of ourselves that the mind and the body are separate is factually dead, but still not permeating mass consciousness in society. The final key shift in reality has been the discovery of cellular consciousness as articulated by pioneering medical researchers such as Candace Pert and Bruce Lipton. In the 20th century, Freud and the science of psychology 
developed the concept of the subconscious mind, but labored under the assumption and the then reality of the Cartesian body-mind split. They developed the frameworks concerning the subconscious as being a totally mentally mental process or object. We now know that the subconscious mind is at least partly located in the body. The experiences of us all is written into our cells, and some impulses, predispositions, tendencies, and traits inherited through our DNA. The emerging science of epigenetics is rewriting this part of the old fixed view of our DNA. The current view is we are nature via nurture, or we are reality that stems partly from inheritance of our parents and lineage. And we are partly a product of our environment and the experiences that we have in our formative years. Cellular biology now understands that our genes have two functions. The first is the classically described template function, which Charles Darwin theorized. Here this allows our genes to replicate, making copies of themselves that are passed from generation to generation. This is our nature in that nature versus nurture debate and is beyond our conscious human control. The second function is the transcription function. This more recent finding reveals that each cell in our body contains all our genes, but not all those genes are turned on or expressed. When a gene is turned on, it makes a new protein that alters the structure and the function of the cell. <laughs> Interesting people ask me where I get my protein from. Your body makes protein naturally. <laughs> All right, next part. Interestingly, when the gene is turned on, information about how to make these proteins is transcribed or read from the individual gene. Importantly, this process influenced by the mind of the person in terms of what we do and think. Psychiatrist and researcher Eric Kandel has shown that when we learn our mind affects which genes in our brain, neurons are transcri transcribed. And so by extension, we change our brains literally at a physical level. This is an example of from mind to matter. This is the first level of how the mind can manifest changes at a matter reality, albeit at a cellular level. Given we have billions of cells, there are implications here for how this overall effect could be influencing our overall bodily wellness or disease due to the states of mind influencing the creation and release of various types of transcribed genes. In body-mind psychotherapy, there's a clinical body of evidence that shows how the mind of the child influences the developing body in terms of musculature, body shape, posture, etc. It is believed that this transcription effect plays some part in the shaping of the char characterology of a person. Interested readers are referenced to our characterology section. The real problem is that the old industrial era, false notions still have a momentum in society that as yet has not been largely shifted. An inertia exists, which resists these new paradigms becoming the new global consciousness or common reality. Look out the window right now. Do you accept that what you see out there is largely derived from your mind in this present moment? Do you also accept the possibility that the I that is looking out through the window in this present moment is a self that is both at once neither the body or the mind, but also the highly independent body-mind, where there is only a subtle distinction between the entity we call body and the entity we call mind? Also, to expand on this idea further, do you accept that the concept of the subconscious mind can be found nowhere else than in the body? Chances are that you cannot grasp or embody that reality beyond forming a temporary conceptual mind to understand these new ideas or views. In five minutes, you will largely and subconsciously be acting from the one embedded reality that you and most of society run our lives to which are the old and now increasingly discounted views of the industrial area of reality mentioned above. The purpose of this paper is to present some interesting summaries 
of development and theories of emerging paradigms of reality to describe how we can actually take control and start to shape our life and reality from a creative consciousness paradigm. This paper is described, sorry, this paper is designed to inform the reader so they can start to shed themselves of the old paradigm of reality that constrains us and creates suffering and to help accelerate the ushering in of a new reality which empowers us all and creates a basis for wellness in society. If you have watched What the Bleep Do We Know, then this illustrative documentary highlights how we not really victims to life, but are either unconsciously or consciously affecting and creating our reality in every moment. In this documentary, we note that quantum physics now states, as do all the esoteric mystical religions and traditions, that all things are interconnected, interdependent, and essentially one or unified. Quantum physics sees the universe as existing overall as energy, and this energy exists in two forms, either in particle, having form, or as a wave, unformed or empty of form. Particles can be seen and observed at points in time and space and are the basis for the objects that we perceive in the universe or the conventional reality we're used to living and moving through. This conventional reality does exist, but not in the way that we are led to perceive it. The atomic particles of matter are a very small and subtle manifestation of the form of matter. Waveform energy is not particle based, but is a wave form based. It can, for instance, be thoughts, sounds, mind images, feelings, and other states of energy noted in quantum and mechanical physics. Uniquely, we humans possess both states of energy in our makeup. And so we have an inner wave form energy, world and life, which then flows in and between our grosser particle based body, which is a conventional boundary we think is where we start and end as humans. It is our perception that our physical bodily container is our self that gives rise to our mistake that this is all we are, that this must be cherished and the focus of ourselves, the function of the ego, and leads to separation consciousness where we think I and not we, and start to think of everything outside of this I as both objective and not our concern unless it suits us. The truth is that the embodied reality we call I gives us our definition of time and space Mind gives us time, body gives us objective space. And so from this limited perceived particle form, gross body, we do become a reality with a self-imagined point in time and space. Man created time as a concept because our embodied reality puts us in a time-space continuum where past, present, and future can be measured and perceived and we see ourselves progressing in a lineal fashion down a path of time. Now, that's a lot. So, what we're talking about here in this article is that on a collective society level, humans believe that we are only our physical body. That that is the totality of our being. And quantum mechanics, quantum physics, and all of the quantum studies have ushered in new ideas to prove that this is not the case. In fact, when you look at your human being, you are made up of 99 point nine 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 percent atoms which is nothing more than energy so your physical body that you see is only point zero 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 one percent matter so you are more energy we are more energy than we are physical matter so now when you can when you can grasp this concept 
and then you realize that you are an energy being and that the energy that you are emanating from your being can be placed on a certain frequency that aligns with what you would like to manifest. This is what quantum manifestation is all about. Because you can literally go into the quantum. Like I told you, we have an electromagnetic field that's permeating around our physical bodies. Some people will call it aura. Uh, some people may call it your vibe, right? It's not something that you can see. So, well, some people see, see, can see auras, depending on their level of consciousness and uh, spirituality and so forth. Um, but most people can't, right? But it's a vibe. It's a feeling. So that feeling that you're pulsating from your body, like that heartbeat, is the same that permeates from the Earth's atmosphere. There is a pulsating, vibrating feeling. And then if you expand that even more, like I said, out into the galaxy, out into the cosmos, it's all the same, right? So as above, so below. One of the seven hermetic or Tehuti laws. As above, so below. So as the cosmos interact and move around, so do you. Once you can fixate your energy to align with that vibration that you're seeking, then it's just a matter of time for that manifestation to come into reality. See, it's no longer, we're no longer, and what this article was talking about, you know, is that, um, and, and, and the collective is still catching up, right? Um, the collective consciousness on this planet is still catching up to the idea or to the knowing that we are energy beings. The reason why I say we're still catching up is because when we look out across society, across the world, there are lots of things that are very low vibration that will not exist once the mass or majority of the collective consciousness really shifts into understanding that we are energetic beings, that we can create the world that we choose to live in and that we want to live in. We don't have to sit back and wait for someone, something outside of us to make these changes, that we individually can make these changes. And when we make these changes individually on an individual level, then these changes permeate collectively, right? Because again, we're energy fields. So we are interacting with each other's electromagnetic fields. So when each of us raise our vibration and we raise our frequency and we operate and we want to start manifesting from a frequency, which is the highest frequency of all, unconditional love, then we'll see the entire planet change. It's really that simple. So it's not about necessarily, you know, um, picketing or doing all of these external things, right? The only, if, you want, if, you, if you want to see a global change, all you have to do is work on yourself. Work on raising your vibration. Work on raising your frequency. Work on manifesting things that raise your vibration and raise your frequency. That's it. If each person works on themselves, then boom, we're in the golden age. Very, very simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, break this up into two parts. It might even be three parts. So um, we'll do part two tomorrow and maybe a part three. This is a really long article. Um, but what I encourage you to do, you know my, my go-to 
as I always stress how important meditation is. How important meditation is. Meditation is your medication. I think we talked about that yesterday. So when you want to manifest in the quantum, you got to get still. You have to connect. How do you do that? Well, we're energy beings, meaning we're light. We are light beings. So the more dense you are, no pun intended, <laughs> but the more dense you are, heavier foods, negative thoughts, negative social media, having people around you that gossip, just you're just dense. You just you just think that you are just your body. That's a very dense being. It's very hard to change dense matter. It's very easy to manipulate light. Very easy to manipulate light. So how do you become lighter? How do you tap into this energetic field that you have? That's through meditation. Connecting with the quantum. And the quantum can be called anything. So don't don't get don't let the words fool you. Quantum be, can be called God divine consciousness, the unified field, infinite possibilities, infinite potential, Jah, Rastafari, Allah, Jesus, Buddha, Christ consciousness. It's all the same. All right. So don't don't let the labels fool you. So when you connect into that energy and you raise your frequency to connect to that energy, that is divineness. That is where you can start manipulating things in this third dimension. And how do you get there? How do you get from point A to point B? Through meditation. Through meditation. And meditation is a practice. It doesn't happen overnight. It is a practice. You'll get to a point. I probably meditate. In my waking hours, if I'm if I'm awake for 12 hours, I'm literally meditating for 12 hours. If I'm awake for 20 hours, I'm literally meditating, right? So you'll have to start, you know, where you have to sit and you do your posture and you get your mind still. But once you continue to practice, continue to practice, continue to practice, you can be sitting and looking at someone and talking to them directly and still meditating because your subconscious mind never sleeps. It's always turned on. All right. So, hey, I hope you enjoyed uh, this episode. Great episode. I can't wait to get through um, the rest of this article. This is this stuff right here. Just oh, I love it. I love quantum physics. I love neuroscience. I love physics. All of this stuff. Uh, because it's real. It, re it, it, it is real. Even though you can't see it with your naked eye, it is real. So start utilizing this, putting it into practice, and start manifesting what it is that you want. Stop complaining about you're not getting what you want. You're not getting what you want because you're not putting in the work, period. Because you're a co-creator. You are God. You are one with the divine. You are one in the same. Right? So anyways, um, we'll chat tomorrow and we'll continue with this and we'll see how many parts that we need to do. So I hope you have a great day. Peace and unconditional love. Thank you for tuning in. Please like, share, and subscribe via iTunes and Google Play for upcoming episodes. If you're committed to scaling your business and life to the next level, book a free strategy session with Cashflow Queen Kenitra by visiting the website, nobscloser.com. Again, that's N-O-B-S-C-L-O-S-E-R.com. Again, visit nobscloser.com to book a free strategy session today.